Hello friends, Brandon here with the Wenatchee River Institute. Uh, we miss you. Hope you're staying happy and healthy. Hope that you're playing outside. And we look forward to seeing you again really soon. That being said, we've got a new episode for you today. We're going to be talking about how energy connects everything in the web of life. So, check it out. All right, we're going to start by asking two questions. First question, what is energy? Well, the answer might seem simple, but it's also kind of mysterious. Energy is the ability to do work. And when I say work, I mean play, hunt, grow, reproduce, all living cells in all living organisms need energy to do the work they have to do. Here's the mysterious part. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred from one form to another. And for all of us organisms here living on Earth, we have one main source of energy that starts the whole process off. We're talking about that big fireball in the sky called our sun. Okay, second question. What is matter? Well, matter, scientists define as anything with weight that takes up space. So basically, every living thing on Earth is made of matter. Your body is made of matter. Every time your body is growing, it's using energy to create more matter. And matter stores energy. So we'll take a little closer look on how this process works. Hello everyone, it's Katie from the Wenatchee River Institute today. We learned earlier that all living things need the energy that they get from the food they eat to survive. But since plants can't use a knife and fork like we can, I wonder where they get their energy from. Plants actually make their own food from light through a process called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process used by plant to convert light into energy. Plants need three ingredients in order to perform photosynthesis. They need water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide. Let's take a closer look. Plants have three main parts to them. The leaves, the stem, and the roots. The roots stretch deep underground, which they use to pull water and nutrients from the soil. The water and nutrients are then transported up through the stem and into the leaves. The leaves absorb light and carbon dioxide through pores on the underside of the leaf called stomata. Carbon dioxide is the gas people and animals exhale every time they breathe. Through photosynthesis, plants can take the water and nutrients they pull up through their roots and the sunlight and carbon dioxide they absorb through their leaves and transform them into two things. Glucose, which is a type of sugar that the plant uses for energy, and oxygen. Glucose is the food the plant has made for itself and is distributed to all parts of the plant. The oxygen is a byproduct that the plants breathe out. People and animals use this oxygen to breathe and exhale the carbon dioxide that is needed by plants, and the cycle continues. An herbivore is an animal that gets its energy by eating only plants. This includes leaves, flowers, fruit, roots, and seeds. Herbivores play an important part in the web of life. Take a vole, for instance. This little mouse-like rodent eats grass, roots, and seeds that it finds. The energy that is transferred from the sun is stored in the plants, allowing the vole to grow larger and reproduce, which creates more matter in their environment. But the energy doesn't stop there. This matter just happens to be an energy source for another kind of animal in the web. 
Hi everyone, hope you're having a good spring. It's Elisa from the Wenatchee River Institute. Carnivores are animals that only eat meat. Some of the carnivores that you may know are hawks and cougars and bobcats, maybe some eagles. An omnivore is an animal that eats both plants and meat. An example of this is the coyote. The coyote has a skull and a jaw that is developed with both flat molars and pointy molars so that they can chew both plants and meat. The sun feeds the grass, the grass feeds the vole, and finally the vole feeds the coyote. The coyote doesn't actually take a bite from the sun, but it indirectly receives its energy from it. Without the sun, the coyote could not receive the energy it needs to survive and have more young. As the energy from the sun is passed through every animal, that animal uses some of the energy to grow, and that leaves less for the next animal that eats it. That means that the grass gets more energy from the sun than the coyote gets from the vole. Hey, it's Naomi from the Wenatchee River Institute, and we're moving through the food chain here. Coyote has now grown older and dies one spring day, but the food web doesn't end here. Coyote has now become carrion, and carrion is the scientific word for the remains of dead animals. Carrion is something that most people like to avoid. It's usually unpleasant and it emits foul odors. But the decomposition of carrion is an, an important process in the web of life. Decomposition is a natural process. When a plant or animal dies, that plant or animal is broken into tiny pieces, and those pieces become a part of the soil. This process occurs with the help of decomposers. So who are some of these key players in the decomposition of coyote? Microscopic bacteria help to break down the carrion, often producing those smelly odors that help attract decomposers and scavengers. Some animals, like eagles and raccoons, eat the tissue of carrion. They are called scavengers. They will then digest the tissue and cycle the nutrients back into the environment through their waste. Many beetles feed on the remains, even flies too. They help to break down the carrion into tiny pieces. Fungi also work to break down these smaller pieces. They feed on decaying matter and return nutrients to the soil for plants to use. Without decomposers, nutrients would not get recycled and we would have dead material piled everywhere. Hello, hello again, Katie again. And moments ago, we learned that fungi and decomposers break down animal waste and skeletons. But what happens after that? What is the next part of our story? Well, I'd like to welcome you back again to the world of plants because we're talking about dirt, specifically nutrients in the soil. Remember when I mentioned how plants suck up water and nutrients through their roots that travel deep underground. Well, where do you think that nutrients comes from? That's right, one organism's waste is another organism's delicious nutrients. We all need to eat to survive. I wonder how many steps are between the meal I just ate and the sun. Let's map it out. I had a turkey sandwich for lunch today, and I know that turkeys don't get their energy directly from the sun, so I need to research what they eat. It turns out turkeys eat small reptiles such as snakes and lizards and also large insects like grasshopper spiders and caterpillars. Let's trace the lizard. Lizards eat insects such as beetles, ticks, crickets, flies, and ants. Let's trace the cricket. The cricket eats plant material such as grass and we know where the grass gets its energy from, the sun. Now track your way to the sun based on your last meal or your favorite food.